And we're live. Uh, this is Rebecca Martin. I am the founder and editor in chief of Cinema Femme Magazine. And I am so excited to be talking to Jacqueline Bethany, who we've featured in the past of her various projects. And uh, we are going to be talking about her, her film Indigo Valley, which, which is coming out uh, September 8th on Apple TV. So uh, yeah, Jacqueline, how are you doing today? <laughs> I'm good. How are you? <laughs> good, good. Yeah, it's it's a bit bit crazy. I'm at my boyfriend's parents' place, and I'm in an office space, so it's a little little nuts. But I'm I'm glad that we could we could do this. Um, so I just want to yeah. jump into it. Um, I how did you like? What was your path? Uh, Sorry, it's like cutting out really bad. Oh, is it? Okay, hold on. Technical difficulties. I think it's good now. Okay. I'm going to I'm going to put my headphones in. That might help. Okay. Okay, can you hear me okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, so I wanted to start with how you got into directing. I know you've been an actor for, for a while and you've, you've done some amazing, you've been involved with a lot of amazing films and everything. And um, yeah, I just wanted to hear like, what, what took you into directing before we jump into Indigo Valley? Um, I don't know. I mean, I think I started out when I was little, like performing and acting. And the first thing I ever did actually was something that I did a production. I put on my own production of Annie in my backyard. That's awesome. So I was eight and I was directing it and also in it. And then I, I sort of like that led to me doing community theater because that was like the most accessible thing. Yeah. Um, at that time in Mississippi where I'm from. Mm -hmm. um, and so I guess like the first thing I ever directed was when I was like eight, but I didn't necessarily know when I was growing up that I wanted to be a director. Mm -hmm. um, and I think I started performing because it was more accessible and I didn't always think that being a director was a career that I could have. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And so as I like, I went to college for theater and I lived in New York. I went to college in New York and stayed there for a few years afterwards doing various things. And mm -hmm. one of those things was I directed just like a scene showcase, okay. um, which was very like a very small thing in like a New York, you know, like a studio. Mm -hmm. um, but I really like, I really enjoyed it. And so I started thinking about how I could get into film and I had only had kind of one experience as an extra. And um, <laughs> I don't know. And at that time, a lot of things were filming in the South. Like this was five, five years, four or five years ago. And mm -hmm. um, like, so there was a lot of activity in New Orleans and, um, and Mississippi. And so I just got a lot of experience like in, small and like day player roles on these bigger sets and got to see how these, um, you know, these directors like um, Jay Roach and mm -hmm. uh, Tate Taylor, people that are now kind of directing big studio films were, were operating on set. And I found that really interesting, but I kept writing short films and producing on a, you know, just to kind of start out. And then mm -hmm. um, I, moved to London to pursue a screenwriting master's nice. because I figured like, I don't know, I wanted to live in another country. I wanted to study film. Um, I'd always loved London, like the theater and yeah. the, 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 even the film that comes out of there, film and TV. So, and when I was there, I directed a short for like, for actually for the application for AFI and I'd never directed a short film before, but I had like, I guess, yeah, like you said, like a lot of acting experience, theater mm -hmm. experience. I mm -hmm. like did, I worked in fashion for a while. So it was like all these different kind of elements coming together um, that for that. And then that was, I guess, when I realized that I wanted to direct on that, um, that first thing that I made. Yeah, that's great. And that was the the Delta Girl. Was that no? Um, the oh. Delta Girl was this was my AFI thesis. Oh, okay, right. This, right. Was, this was a short film that um, is on Amazon called Between Departures, and it's oh yeah, okay. 
Yeah, that's great. That's great. Um, yeah. So I, I, I mean, you, you, you're just like, I don't want to say you're a machine, but you're yeah. <laughs> in the sense that you keep going and you keep doing amazing things. And I'm just so excited about all your projects, but, but because, you know, Indigo Valley is coming up, we'll, we'll just stick on Indigo Valley. But before we get started in that discussion, I just wanted to show a clip for, for people who, yeah. um, you know, haven't seen it and want to get intrigued. This is a really good clip. So um, I will pull that up here. All right, we'll be back. Why did you tell them to fly me here? They called me, put my name down on the forum. I, I didn't put your name down yes, on the forum. Yes, you did. I don't know why you keep saying I didn't put your name down. I didn't do that. There was no, there were no form. Stop acting like this. Acting like what? Like you had a choice. Whether you put my name down or not, you you had nowhere to go. I, there were so many places I could have gone. Where? Your apartment, your apartment in New York. You would have been alone in my uh, apartment. I'm alone here. No, you're not. I'm here. Oh, that's great. Can you can you yeah. hear me okay? Yep, okay. So I, I was wondering, could you summarize for people who are watching what Indigo Valley is about? Yeah. Um it's about two sisters that have a strained relationship, I guess, and are sort of brought back together in this circumstance of um, the one of the sisters, Louise, is, it's kind of ambiguous who's younger or older. I don't know, I wrote it one way, but I think it might read another way. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So Louise's character is recently married, um, and that she and her her new her, her husband are going on this this trip, um, and the character that I play, um, Isabella, is damaged and sort of seeking refuge and has nowhere to go. So ends up joining them on this desert journey that's supposed to be like you know like a romantic getaway for them, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it ends up not being that. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, just that one scene we show just shows there's a lot going on, you know? And and that's what I love about the film. Uh, I do want to talk about the structure and like how you put those pieces together, but I also want to know like what brought you to this film? Because it, it started as a short, mm -hmm. right? And yeah. it was in a different location. The short is really different. Oh, okay. It's okay. the same characters, but mm -hmm. um, we did, we filmed it in Iceland. Yeah. So, cool. um, and it was, it's not really like, it was, it was kind of long. It was more like 20, it's like over 20 minutes. And I think kind of was more like a proof of concept mm -hmm. for the future. Mm -hmm. And there are definitely like elements that stayed the same, but I think um, the casting of the leads is too different. The location is different. The story is obviously more evolved. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I don't know. I think okay. I, I decided to, well, shoot it in the US because I felt like it was Iceland. It's a beautiful country with a lot of amazing, like homegrown filmmakers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I didn't feel like I was going to be able to compete with like you you know like and just in terms of like funding and all of that right. it, like it was gonna take forever yeah cool. okay and then how did that story come together because it it's it's just it's so interesting I, I remember when I interviewed you a couple months ago you were talking to me about how you love the whole like three like mm -hmm. maja, maja toi or whatever how you yeah. say it like was that kind of what like what were the influences for for that that story for Indigo Valley? Um, I think I I was also I, I think I'm sort of interested in like classic because I'm also like from the South and I grew up reading a lot of Tennessee Williams mm -hmm. and um, William Faulkner and sort of these dudes really kind of intimate family dramas um, that are that are also very dark. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so I think that was influenced for me in just terms of like this poetic storytelling and like the fam, the sister, the sister relationship and the sort of man coming in and 
causing, I mean, like who is really the conflict in the situation is interesting. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I think it was inspired by my love of sort of like classic drama and yeah. that sort of subtlety that I think, you know, on stage, there's a lot that happens off off stage. And mm -hmm. like, always, I think that's one reason kind of why I got into film. Yeah. Because I was asking like backstories or like things that, you know, cause you can only show so much. And I think that that was, you know, like, I guess like with Indigo Valley, you, you meet them and you may think a certain thing about these characters. And then as the movie goes on, you learn more about them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How, how did the casting process go? That wasn't a question I asked you last time. And I'm curious, um, you know, Ro Rosie Day, she played yeah. the sister and then, um, Brandon. Brandon Spleenar. Yeah, yeah. So how did you find them for the other roles? Um, well, I had a casting director and um, he brought on Brandon and then Rosie was someone that uh, had reached out to me about uh, working together on on a project because she okay. she's pretty supportive of, of filmmakers and she's directed a, a few female filmmakers and she's directed a few shorts. So, and I was like, actually, I have this movie that I'm trying to ca to cast. Yeah. So that was the timing of that. Um, and yeah, I mean, I think, you know, they had never met before. Like, mm -hmm. she's mm -hmm. in London. So we had some, like, um, you know, FaceTime rehearsals and stuff beforehand. But the kind of the whole crux of the film was dependent on their relationship. Mm -hmm. and so it was lucky that they worked well together because yeah. you never know. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. So really just having like, you know, the, I guess like the the challenges of a, of a low budget film where you can't like bring in, you know, actors overseas to do like mm -hmm. a chemistry read or something. So, um, but I had, I had a great casting director and um, we, we kind of went through different people and, we landed on them. That's great. That's great. And I want to show just one more clip that I think really um, captures like you piecing together the film in terms of like the music and the setting and everything. So I'll show that real quick and then we'll, we'll get into talking about that. Okay. Yeah, I love that. Oh my God. And I, yeah. so, yeah, I guess, I mean, we could talk about that scene or we could talk about how you used, uh, you know, Indigo. What is that? What What is the, the location? I know it's like the desert in California, but what, what was the area that you were like filming that, at? That, um, that's specifically like Malibu, I think. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you would never know. You're like, that's in the I know. It looks like <laughs> Africa or something. Right. I and I don't want to give away like the, the right. We actually, it's not somewhere exotic. Right. Um, no, yeah. but, but yeah, what I, I mean, it, that scene and just the role of like music, I don't know if we could talk about that for a little mm -hmm. bit, like who, like where, where the music came from and, and yeah. just how you used you know, the landscape. I think that both of those things were like integral to the film, the, the music and the landscape. And the music is so good. I mean, I don't, I'm like, it's my movie, but. No, it's, it's good, yeah. Very moving and very uh -huh. beautiful and like tense, 
Um, mm -hmm. and European, it has a lot of, it's just, it's very, I like they, I had, I worked with two, two women on mm -hmm. it and they collaborated and one of Mesa Pullman who just released her first full length album, who has more of like a singer songwriter, folksy Americana mm -hmm. background. And then Delal Brookman, who is Austrian and, um, is has been scoring films for a little bit, but comes from a classical background. So that sort of fed into the character of John and then Mesa kind of with like the desert, you know, the desert atmosphere in her music. Mm -hmm. um, when the two of them came together, it was just like really magical. Oh, that's um, great. Yeah. That's awesome. And yeah, I actually wanted to talk about that as well, like your team. Like mm -hmm. I, I'm just learning so much from filmmakers about you know, really good films, um, you know, it's it's collaboration, it's having a good team. And how did you go about putting, you know, your your team together? And how were you thoughtful? And I'm sure you were about uh, bringing women in for behind behind the camera as well. I mean, yeah, I think it kind of formulated for me because for me, because I was just coming off AFI. And I had also done a program in London that that's that program in London. And I'd met a bunch of women that I ended up working with at both of those places, but also through festivals. Oh, sorry, I'm gonna like drop my laptop. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> through festivals and um, introduced through, you know, different friends or something. And um, so the DP of the project, I actually met at the Reykjavik Film Festival. Mm, yeah. Um, four years ago. Uh, and so she had shot this short and this is also, I think, her first feature um, as a DP. Nice. And then, um, so we've been working together for a bit. And the the musician, the composers I said I brought on, like, from just working with them on different short films. And um, I think every, I had a producer in London, and then I had a producer here. And I think every head of department Although we we did have some guys on it, but all of we had a female represented as as a head of every department. Oh, so, I love that. Yeah, and that wasn't like I don't know intentional necessarily because I think it's like you should you know prioritize people who can do the work regardless of their gender. But I think mm -hmm. it was like in retrospect, it's been cool to like realize that, and sort of it is you know it's like the movie is about two women, and um, I think you know, make a lot of these women that came on board related to the story and wanted to help like a first time female director make her first feature, so. Yeah, that's great. And then, uh, I mean, I wanna hear what's coming up next for you because I know you've been working on a project, but but my uh, one one question I'm, I'm interested in, so playing Isabel, Bella, Isabella and Anne being a director, I just think that's fascinating because that character is so interesting to me. And this is something we talked about in our past feature or in, in mm -hmm. your feature about her being so complex and having, you know, maybe some kind of disorder or mental illness or so complex. And what were you as an actor and a director trying to bring to that character on screen? Oh my God. I mean, I think it was really intense. Mm -hmm. um, and also because I had been living with the story and developing it for a year or two. So I, you know, I also, I'm not someone who wants to be in everything that I direct or I'm like not promoting myself as like an actor, director, or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, I think there are, they are separate, but in the case of this film, I felt like I could do both. <laughs> and I <laughs> wanted to do both because I'd never gotten the opportunity in both. I've never directed a feature and I'd never been a lead in a feature. So I was mm -hmm. like, it's my project in a way, like, I'm just going to see what, like, I'm just going to do it. Mm -hmm. um, and it was, I think because I had like a really great um, team and cast and everyone was really kind of behind me doing it. And it was very, it was small enough. So I felt like really supported and knew everyone I was working with. And so I think that really helped because I was really, because she is like, she is so complex and intense and dark. I think mm -hmm. that really kind of like also like took a toll on me in a way maybe that I didn't realize. 
I definitely know it did now, but like when I was shooting, I just felt like so drained. Oh all yeah. The time. <laughs> um, and like, I hate, like everyone hated me. Like I was just like living in this, like in a lot of the times it was hard to like turn that off and like focus yeah. on looking at a shot. But I had someone, I guess like the good thing about that part although it was very difficult, there were scenes that she was not, you know, that it was focused on the couple. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I was kind of able to step out and guide that story a little bit. Okay. And um, I had someone when I was, when I was in, I had someone record like the monitor on an iPad and then I would just watch it um, after. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. It was crazy. Yeah. I mean, it was like, and then I did it again. So I don't know if like it was some, it's just dependence on, it depends on the project, honestly. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I think it's, I think, I think people, I mean, can do it. I think, I think anyone can do it who is an actor and believes that, you know, that they believe in a character or a story and mm -hmm. they also, you know, are spearheading the project in some way. Um, it's worth the risk. I learned a lot and I think hopefully my performance is is believable. Oh um, my God. Yeah. It's amazing. I went through it. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's like, it was fun, but also really challenging, if that makes sense. Yep. Yep. I mean, I, I, I can't, I can't act. I, I'm not a director. So just so it, it kind of make, messes with your mind a little bit when you're like, how yeah. do you direct you yeah. being so in that role and then going back and then look, yeah, there's a lot of pieces there, but that's why I think it's fascinating. Um, so I, I have two last questions. Um, okay. One I wanted to ask was uh, what's coming up next for you? Cause I know you're working on a project. <laughs> I'm a, yeah. So I'm crazy. Um, <laughs> if you haven't figured that, no, no, no. I mean, it's like, uh, I shot a movie during the pandemic, but it's not a pandemic pandemic movie. It doesn't have to do with COVID. Um, although it like, I think like it said like the, the article or whatever. Anyway, and I, it is about, it's, it's actually really interesting. And I think is probably my favorite thing that I've done. Nice. Um, What's it called? What's the title? It, it, Right now, it's called "Before the World Set on Fire," and it, it's about a um, a young professor, female professor at like a a kind of you know like a small liberal arts college in the Northeast, and um, their campus is quarantining for a different reason mm. um, that I don't want to give away, but it's not right. COVID, okay. um, and she's conducting, she's a philosophy professor and she's kind of conducting this seminar on Zoom. Mm -hmm. And in the course of that class, uh, you know, you know, it's like, it's like how we react when things change and when things are uneasy and um, the students are just sort of like unruly and no one really knows the medium and it's weird. And she's trying to teach Nietzsche, which, like the specific seminars on Nietzsche and which is also like a very challenging subject. Mm -hmm. So, and over the course of the, the class, there's one student who's obviously having some sort of issues. And so as it goes on, there's like, there's something, something happens with him. There's an incident. And then in the second half of the movie, which is shot like in real life, like in real person, I don't know how to explain it. Um, okay. The camera. Uh, okay she is sort of blamed by the institution for what happens in her class. Wow. And also something else. And then the, the whole movie ends up in the final part is in nature. Wow. Which is interesting because we've start, we start out on a screen and then we end up, it's like, yeah, it's like kind of. I love scene. that. Oh my God. I'm excited. Yeah. It's I will really definitely. Wild. Be, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Yeah. So, yeah, I'll be following that. And also congratulations on the Emmy win for your series. Oh, the yeah, thank you. That, that's well, it's not mine, but it's- Well, it's no, I, but show. it's part of you. So, the actress's yeah. name was- Tina Benko, yeah. Yeah, she won the Emmy, mm -hmm. but it was for her part in your series. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. so that, that is connected to you, I would I say. know, I know it is. I just like, someone wrote that I won and I was like, I didn't win. I just like, I had someone win on behalf yeah. of the show. 
But that just it tests your directing, you know? So that I think it's great. But I know she's an amazing actress as well. So that was just a great collaboration, yeah. I think. So that's something to be happy and proud about, I feel. Um, and then last thing was, do you have advice for emerging? I know you, I would, you're emerging, but I would say you're yeah. really getting your foot like down and like, what your work is and um do you have any advice for women who are just kind of getting into it you know like what just because you've done so much so do you I have know, any but it's also advice? like i feel like i'm like an early career director so when people ask me this i'm like no that i guess yeah you know i think there was there was a lot for a long time i felt a lot of pressure like to make also on Indigo Valley, you know, mm -hmm. because people put a lot of pressure on your first feature, mm -hmm. which I think is kind of like not great because to me, like, I think at the time, and I didn't know, but I was like, oh, this is my one chance. This is it. Like, I have to get everything right. I have to do this. I have to really show myself or whatever. Mm -hmm. And it's really not about that. Um, and I think going through it and like keeping, um, I kept making stuff afterwards as opposed to just letting this, you know, because now we made it two years ago, right? So it's like, you don't know, especially with indie film, mm -hmm. if your movie is ever gonna get released, if it's like ever gonna make any money, if it's ever gonna get seen. So it's like, you're taking a risk. And I feel like I was putting, or felt a lot of pressure. And I feel like I wanna make a, a lot of films. Mm -hmm. And I think putting so much pressure on your first feature especially as like a female, like as a, as a woman, I hope that like women, other women can make a lot of movies and not just make one and, you know, think mm -hmm. that that's gonna, and for some people it does, for some people it does like really launch them, but for a lot of people it doesn't. And they make a lot, a lot of, a lot of films. So yeah. I think that that's, that's something interesting that I learned. And yeah, I mean, yeah. you got to think long term. And I, I love that right now. It's just like women supporting women in their careers. And I feel like that's really going to give people a good body of work, you know, whereas before it was just sad, you get one film and then that's where what do I you mean. go. So and I, and I, you know, and I, I was struggling because I was like, oh, like, what did this person make first? And then I would have never heard of it. And it made me feel better because I was like, Ah, like there's, you know what I mean? Like right. people, some people's first features win Sundance or get huge distribution or like, mm -hmm. and I was struggling because I was like, that's not gonna happen. No, I don't know, who knows? Like what'll yeah. happen with the line, but it didn't happen with this movie and that's okay. Like everyone has like a different journey. Yes. It doesn't have anything to do with the quality of your work. Oh yeah. And I, I love everything you're doing and we'll have a separate one for highway one because oh, I'm yeah. a fan of that movie, <laughs> but I know you got to go. So go see Indigo Valley, September 8th, Apple TV. Um, we'll put all the links in our socials and uh, thank, thank you, thank you, Jacqueline. Well, thank you so much for having me. Thank you for your continued support of my work and also of all the amazing, emerging, and right. established filmmakers you're supporting. So Yes. All right. Well, thank you, Jacqueline. Bye. Bye. Have a good day. <laughs> you too.